In this clip we will discuss how measurement error influences the properties of parameter estimates. We start out by considering a simple regression model. Uh, looks very familiar, yi being a function of an explanatory variable. Now xi, I call that asterisk for reasons which will become obvious soon. We shall now assume that this variable xi asterisk is the actual variable we are interested in. Okay, so that's what we want as explanatory variable. So let, let's say that's the income of family i, income of the i family. So far, so straightforward. But now we shall also recognize that possibly what we're actually measuring when we are measuring family income is actually something different and we call that xi. So that xi is now the actual response we get from the i family when we ask them for their income. But this response xi is most likely going to be somewhat different to the actual true underlying family income xi asterisk. And you can imagine if I asked you what exactly your income is, you wouldn't be able to know that. To, to answer exactly. Now xi and xi asterisks are different and they're different by this term vi and this is what we call the measurement error. So to summarize what we what we have is an observed value xi but that's different from the unobserved value xi asterisk. So to continue what we need to do is we need to make some assumptions on that measurement error to be able to analyze this problem we shall assume that this measurement error and the error ui in our regression model are uncorrelated. We shall assume that the expected value of the measurement error is zero and we will label the variance of the measurement error sigma squared v to indicate it's the sigma squared for the measurement error and the measurement error and the true value for the variable xi, xi asterisk uncorrelated. So the expected value of the cross product is equal to zero. So with these assumptions under our belt, we can look back at our regression model at this guy back here. So let's just copy this down. Here it is. So this cannot be estimated because we actually do not have xi asterisks. Okay, so we cannot estimate this. So what we'll do is we will replace the xi asterisk with our xi minus the measurement error. And we do just a little bit of algebra. We isolate the xi term. And now we have two error terms here and we just um, collect them in one new error term which we call epsilon i. So that epsilon i is ui minus beta times vi. It's the original regression error and vi the measurement error combined. Now this can be estimated and also note that the alpha and the beta are actually the same parameter coefficients as we had them in the original regression model which we are interested in estimating. So we can estimate that, but the question is, is A4 valid? Uh, namely, is the explanatory variable xi and the error term epsilon i, are they uncorrelated? So the question is, what is this term? The expected value of the cross product of xi and epsilon i. So we'll do a little bit of algebra again. We substitute for xi, um, xi asterisk plus vi, and for epsilon i, our uh, definition of that composite error term. And the question is, is this guy equal to zero? Because then A4 would be valid. So there are basically four terms here. The expected value of xi asterisk times ui plus the expected value of xi asterisk times negative beta vi. Now that negative beta is a constant coefficient, so we'll actually move that in front of the expectation. So we'll just write this a little nicer. So negative beta times expected value of xi asterisk vi plus expected value vi ui minus beta expected value of vi squared. Now we should recognize that the first three terms are going to be equal to zero. The second and third due to our assumptions on the measurement error. 
the first due to a maintained assumption of the explanatory variable in your original model which is xi asterisk and the error term in that model ui being uncorrelated. The problem with A4 we'll see only comes through the measurement error. So if we, there's one term left, expected value of vi squared times negative beta, expected value of vi squared is just the variance of vi which we label sigma squared v. Now that variance is usually going to be larger than zero and hence the entire term is going to be unequal to zero if there's measurement error, i.e. the variance is larger than zero, and if the explanatory variable xi asterisk is actually relevant. That means beta should actually be unequal to zero here. Therefore, if that's the case, A4 does not hold, because then the expected value of xi times epsilon i is unequal to zero. So, if we use this model, the one which we can estimate, we need to recognize that the estimate for beta will be biased and inconsistent. And that's of course a problem. However, you should note that not all measurement error actually leads to biased estimates. For instance, measurement error in the dependent variable will not lead to biased parameter estimates and neither does measurement error in irrelevant explanatory variables. That's the case where that beta is actually equal to zero. So in that case we will also not have problems with our parameter estimates. So what it is we actually need in order to estimate consistent estimators for beta in the presence of measurement error is what we call instrumental variable estimation.